Ein kurzes Hallo von Köln nach Innsbruck. Könnt ihr mich hören? Hallo? Ja, ja wir können uns hören. Super, ein bisschen Geduld noch. Die Leute kommen gerade zurück aus den Seelen. Ich werde dann auch auf Englisch wechseln. Just give me a few seconds to get, to get the other people now. I'll be back. Uh, maybe until uh, people are coming back from uh, coffee break, um, just a short introduction. Most of you probably uh, heard my talk in the morning about Mars analog missions and Mars pioneers and Mars analog astronauts. And now you have the chance to meet um, our new class of analog astronauts, which has been selected only uh, two months ago. So this is the first time um, they have a public appearance, and I'm very happy that uh, we have them here, and um, I hope we can start really soon. I'm looking for Alex, which is giving me hopefully a sign, <laughs> and I hope the, our group is not exhausted from the, from the training weekend already. I think we're set to go. Okay. Okay, so um, my first questions to the um, analog astronauts. Um, could you please introduce yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, and why did you apply to become an analog astronaut? Uh, hello, Paul. Uh, my name is Joel Osada. I'm uh, originally from Portugal. Uh, currently, I'm an aerospace uh, engineer at uh, OHB in Bremen. And uh, for me, the main reason for applying for being an analog astronaut is this uh, opportunity that we have to develop the technologies in a similar environment to what it will be on Mars uh, that can help future explorers to actually explore Mars. So for me, that's my motivation. Hi, I'm Carmen. I um, work at the German Weather Service in Offenbach, which is near Frankfurt, and I applied for the Mars Analog Astronauts because I've always, I always wanted to be an astronaut, and I'm very happy to simulate being an astronaut. Hi everyone, um, my name is Karthik Kumar, I'm uh, from the Netherlands, living in Italy at the moment. I work as an aerospace engineer at uh, Dynamica in Milan. And my motivation for being here is uh, because it affords me an opportunity to contribute towards the greater goal of finally landing a person on Mars. And I'm happy to be able to contribute to that in any way possible. Hello, Köln. Uh, my name is Stefan Dobrovolny from Austria. I'm in my final year of med school in Vienna. Uh, well, I joined the analog astronauts because I'm always seeking for new challenges and I think the goal of reaching Mars is a big challenge and a, a good challenge. Hello, Colm. I'm Inigo Muñoz, originally from Spain, uh, from the north in San Sebastian, currently living in Munich and working for HE Space as a, a mission engineer in the Galileo Control Center. And I joined the team as well of analog astronauts because I want to see someday a person walking on Mars and I want to be as close as possible to this sensation they will experience in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, we are here at the um, Europe European Astronaut Center where the astronauts train. Um, you are in Innsbruck uh, for a training weekend. Maybe could you explain a little bit what is happening uh, during an analog astronaut training weekend? What do you learn? What do you have to do? Is it exhausting? Do you have some free time? So uh, the training we have here, it's, uh, it's, uh, it focuses on many topics. Uh, we have everything from a technical background, so we have to know, for example, the kind of uh, rocks that we can find on Mars, the kind of geology that is inherent to Mars. We also have uh, psychological, psychological exams. We have to know how to work within a team. We, know, we need to know how to cope with stress and high-stress situations. 
And then, of course, we need to know the specific technologies that we are using here. So, for example, we have our Ayuda X uh, Sweep Simulator. You can see it there. And, uh, for example, today we had our first donning, where we actually put uh, Carmen here in the suit, and she got her first experience in the suit. And uh, that, was, that was really great, I have to say. I have to say as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Carmen, Carmen, how was it uh, to wear for the first time our princess, the Aouda space suit. I absolutely loved it and I felt like a princess in it, astronaut princess. And it was a great moment when they put the helmet, closed the helmet from my head and I, yeah, I almost saw Mars outside. <laughs> Very good. Um, well, I look in the audience, maybe there are some questions. Does anybody has a questions to our analog astronaut group? Okay. Three questions. Uh, were those the people that you took to Morocco, or have they not been there yet? Um, I uh, rephrase um, the questions. Um, did you go to Morocco, or are you a new group? We did not go to Morocco. We are a new group of uh, analog astronauts that were just uh, started to apply in January, and yeah, this is our first official release, so to say. Anybody else? Otherwise, I, I'm Co. Well, first of all, let me uh, congratulate you guys with uh, being selected and uh, with your first public presence, I think it is today. Um, let me sp specifically uh, congratulate uh, Kartik because uh, he was one of the organizers of the uh, Space of Netherlands team last year and uh, he has now uh, upgraded his career to being a Mars analog astronaut. So uh, that's what happens when you organize space up events. So uh, congratulations, Kartik. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, um, I already talked a little bit about the Amadi 15 mission, the upcoming um, uh, mission at the Kaunadal Glacier. Um, can you uh, give us a little bit more details, or do you know what will happen uh, on the Kaunadal Glacier from an analog astronaut perspective? So, um, I have to say that we are very much in training at the moment, and part of that training involves learning about uh, the future missions. So we have had a preview of the kinds of activities that will occur on the Glacier, where the expedition will occur at approximately 3,000 3, meters altitude. That brings with it certain uh, difficulties and challenges which are being incorporated into our training. Um, there are a vast array of experiments that are going to be conducted with the goal specifically of trying to understand better both operation on the surface and uh, uh, how to interface that with uh, mission scientists. And uh, in the coming months, uh, more will be unveiled to us, so hopefully we'll be able to provide more details at a future date on the state of MD. Okay. Questions from the audience? Um, what do you expect that the, the biggest hurdles will be in, in the first few weeks? Is it, is it uh, adapting to, to the altitude, or will it be... Uh, psychological, uh, you know, psychological implications? What, what do you think the biggest hurdles will be? Well, there, there may be a sum of all of those points because the altitude is really high. Uh, you would need to adapt to the altitude when you are without a suit. And we are wearing this close to 50 kilogram suit with uh, ventilation that is not normal, like, like if you were outside, and yeah, that is one big challenge, a physical challenge. And as you already mentioned, the psychological challenge will be there as well because we are teamed up, we are close to each other, and that can always bring up uh, some tension, but we are trained to, to somehow cope with it. So they already uh, gave us team building lectures and so on, so I, I don't fear that there will be too much tension upcoming. Yeah, and I, I don't 
think that we already see all of the, of the problems that could come up to us. It's enough. <laughs> yes, um, very good. Just um, uh, one question from me. How many trainings, um, uh, I will phrase, sorry. How many trainings weekends uh, will come up for you and do you train in between the training weekends? Yeah, we will have uh, regarding training uh, five weekends of uh, different training blocks that will last from Friday afternoon to Sunday, so it will be two days and a half. Uh, currently, we are undergoing the second session, and of course, we are training uh, in between training blocks, doing uh, a lot of uh, conditioning training and fitness training because, as Stefan said, it will be a challenge to perform at such a high altitude and we should be as well fitness, as, uh, physically fit in order to wear uh, our princess the suit uh, for long uh, EVA periods because we will have the EVAs lasting from three to six hours and you can imagine that the physical workload uh, will be high no shoulders so we are keeping fit training hard and uh, I have to say that today when we came in the early morning that we are doing every day I think that the performance increased for all the groups so we are doing a good job. Great. Um, I'm wondering if um, our uh, project lead, Gernot Grömer, is somewhere in behind and he, if he would like to uh, send a message to Cologne. Well, first of all, uh, <laughs> greetings to you people up in the European Space, uh, European Space Agency uh, Astronaut Center. Uh, actually, these, these guys here, I'm very proud of them. Um, and uh, we try to throw any kind of challenges uh, we can think of at them. And uh, they're a little bit modest in terms of what, what we're throwing at them right now. For instance, uh, the first day in the morning, 7 o'clock, they do one hour physical exercise. They do the glove exercise. They do you know, training over and over again, all the procedures. We throw them into lectures. They barely had any break so far today. Uh, so we are very happy that you had a little bit of a delay in between, which we could use for a little yes. break for them. And I think, <laughs> yeah. 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 So they had a long day. They will have an even longer day tomorrow. Um, so they have to study hard when they're home. They have to adjust their uh, how they what they eat, uh, how they train. We're monitoring that as well. So they get fitness trainers. They get psychological training. And lots of technical training with Auda here. So uh, just this morning, we spent about one hour just learning how to plug in which, which cable goes where or so on. So it, it looks like a, a simple suit from the outside, but there's lots of technology below that. So it's, it takes some time, and we are start, starting to scratch on the surface what this little thing over there can do. And um, it, your life then depends on it. And Carmen had the feeling right in the morning for the first time uh, that he was really depending on the functioning technology of the suit is the moment you realize, yes, well, you are not really on, on Mars, of course, yet, but you're not on Earth either. You're somewhere mentally in limbo. Come on, did I get that somehow? Yes, that describes right. it perfectly. <laughs> and, and I think also from the personal experience, you should have seen her faces uh, when we did the first donning, and uh, you looked like a happy person this morning. Uh, I am so. still very happy about really. it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so how's the mood in Cologne right now? You're very tired of a long day, or I guess you must have had a ton of really interesting lectures and presentations so far. Yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> I think the mood is great, I hope. People are a little bit tired, but I think uh, we can give you a big applause for the uh, live link. I'm really happy that it worked out. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. I don't know if Olivia mentioned that, and I'm also speaking now as uh, the project manager for the MD50 ma mission, but uh, as Olivia might have indicated, we are really preparing something big. It is not only the highest Mars simulation ever under undertaken on Earth so far, but it's also a pretty big mission from a science point of view, uh, from a technological point of view, and we really want to let the world know of it. 
And so we need exactly people like you, which are sitting in the audience with such a strong social media background uh, to, 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 to join us in making our voice heard to the public. And I think we can do great things together. So if you're interested in maybe even considering to join our team in any way, please come and see Olivia. She knows a hell of a lot about this mission already. And it, I would be delighted to see some of you here in the Mission Support Center of the Austrian Space Program here in Innsbruck in Austria. See you in August. Thank you very much to Innsbruck and um, have a great evening. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.